it in this manner. Father, our cry is that Zambia shall prosper, that Zambia shall grow from strength to strength. So this morning at the launch of Zambia Shall Prosper book number two, we want to pray for your presence in our midst. We want to pray for courage and boldness. We want to pray that Father God, you who designed Zambia for us, will be our God. We continue to enthrone you as Lord over this country. We pray that you give strength, you give wisdom, you give boldness, and you give courage to all our leaders. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We can take our seats. After the author speaks, we will hear one song from the choir, and there will also be a theme song. And then after that, we shall go into question and answer session from the members of the press. Ladies and gentlemen, invited guests, our speaker today is the author of the book, Zambia Must Prosper. He is launching Zambia Must Prosper 2, which is a follow-up to the first Zambia Must Prosper. The author is Mr. Kelvin Fube Wadia. He's a lawyer, he's a politician, he's a servant of God, he's the son of Zambia, he's popularly known as KBF. Recently, he earned himself a nickname as the game changer. Help me to welcome to the podium for him to speak, Mr. Kelvin Fube Wadia. I think. Please be seated. Members of the press, and indeed my countrymen, the history of this country tells us of a bitter racial political struggle for independence. What began as a political struggle for one race, for equal opportunities, and access to the wealth of this, our country, has slowly yet painfully graduated into a fight for both equal political opportunities and economic survival for the majority of Zambians against a new class of super-rich Zambians and a few new foreigners who still want to exploit the majority of our people and the nation's wealth. The independence struggle that our founding fathers engaged in, some losing their lives for, was fought so that this generation can have political freedom to open doors to all our economic opportunities. The political freedom meant opening doors also to our social opportunities as well as freedoms of movement, freedom of speech, conscience, freedoms that meant the freeing of our minds to explore our individual and collective potentials as a people. This nation has been tried and tested in different ideologies and political rhetoric systems. This nation has danced for individual political leaders and political parties, hoping, yes, hoping and praying for some miraculous economic breakthrough to get the majority of our Zambian people to prosperity. I want to salute our founding fathers, Dr. Kenneth David Kaunda, Simon Mwansaka Puepwe, the late, Ruben Chitandika Kamanga, the late, Mbikusta Lewanika with his friend Lawrence Katilungu, the late, Arthur Wina, Harry Mwangankumbula, Kapasa Makasa, Axon Soko, Alexander Kamalondo, Dingiswayo Banda, all these are late. 
John Chisata, Fines Bulawayo, Abel Chambeshi, Henry Mwenso, Jackson Mutale, Elias Kainga, Edward Mucheleka, my own father, Eric Benson Bwalia, Watson Mwenya, Faustino Lombe, Mbita Kavalika, John Mwanakatwe, Humphrey Mulemba, all these are late, but they laid a firm foundation for us. We have in our midst war, Sikota Wina, still surviving as a legend. Our mothers were also part of the struggle. I want to salute the original Mama Nakatindi Wina, the late who was the mother to the Princess Nakatindi Wina, for her role in the struggle. Mama Betty Kaunda, Mama Julia Chikamoneka, the late Mama Chivesakan Kasa, the late my own mother, Florence Kasomobualia, her older sister, Mayoba Raphael Kasomochela, and other wives who helped their husbands in the struggle for independence. I salute the gallant Zambians who understood the sacrifices of our nation's founding fathers and mothers and had visions and aspirations to drive this country to economic emancipation. To our former presidents, Dr. Kenneth David Kaunda, our first president, through the Mulungushi reforms who tried to economize and indeed emancipate us, I say thank you. Dr. Frederick Jacob Chiruba, our second president, who came and liberalized the economy from the socialist, commandist economy, I salute you and I say thank you. To Dr. Patrick Levy Mwanawasa, State Council, the late who fought hard to get Zambia out of its debt and put us on a path of economic recovery, I say thank you. To Dr. Rupia Bwezani Banda, who took over a nation in mourning and helped us to heal, I salute you. To this gallant founder of our party, Michael Chirufiasata, the late, also known as the King Cobra, whose vision I helped write down with serious think tank of men and women from many walks of life, alas, gone too soon. And our current president, Edgar Chagwalungu, I salute you all. I want to thank these men for taking up the mantle of presidency. It is not an easy job to do. I want to declare that I will support our current president, president as, as best I can. I have always, always supported him from, from that, that unfortunate, unfortunate morning, morning when I was awakened from my sleep in October 2014 and I was, and I was summoned, summoned to join gallant men and women at Lewanika Close after the death, the death of our fifth president in England. Our, our journey, journey still continues, continues although our viewpoints are, are very different. different. I, have I have learned, learned from, from each of these presidents. I have, I have learned from, from some, some of them at close, close range, range, talking, talking and engaging with them. them. Yet, Yet from, from others, others, I have, I have learned, learned from, from a distance. distance. My, My lessons from all these presidents will always be indelible. indelible. Yet, Yet personal lessons. I, I thank, thank these, these great, great men and, and women, women living, living and, and departed, departed for their sacrifice and endurance and, and for, for delivering, delivering to us, us this, this, our nation, Zambia. Zambia. Thank, Thank you, you indeed, indeed for leading the way, way and showing us how things must, must be done. done. And, and now, now it is it time, time to turn a page in our history. A new, a new page, page to forge, to forge a, new a new history. A history that I ask we live without, without fear, fear but, but renewed hope. Because, because all we need, trust me, me all we, all we need, need are a few good men, a few, a few good, good women, women, a few, a few good, good youths, youth, and, and a few, a few good, good ideas. ideas. Fellow members, members of our, our great, great patriotic, patriotic family, family, in my walk, in my political life, I have always been, been open about, about my, my love, love for my country, and not the love for individual worshiping. worshiping. I have, I have always challenged myself to fight for what I believe is a good, good fight, fight for my, my country. country. Like every person walking the face of this earth, I know that I am not perfect. perfect. Nor can I stand before you or anyone and say, I am right at all times. 
but this I know, I am a true patriot. What I can say, what I can say without shame nor regret, however, is that when it comes to my country, I have always stood with the poor, and I will always stand with the poor. For this is what the great Michael Chukyasata taught me. I have never, I will never, knowingly or willingly play ball for self against my country and the future of this country. That is not who I am. And I pray that this part of me infuses itself in some way into our youth system and into our country, even if it be by osmosis. I have always believed that the blind, blind belief, belief in authority just because it represents a measure of authority is the greatest, greatest enemy of truth, passion, and, and creativity we face today. today. We, we must stand, stand on principle. Today, some, some people, people in the PF have, have called me a rebel. Some have declared repeatedly, saying that over their dead bodies will they allow me to even have a word with my current president. While this may be true for them, I laugh at such things because really I am not that kind of person. They think they are the only people that are entitled. They think they are the only people who deserve. And, and in a way, in a way they would, would like to change me so that, that I like, like to think, think like, like them, them, feel like, like them, and be like them. Some, Some would, would rather hear me say, say that the Patriot front, front as a party comes before my country. country. To, this, to this I say, I say no. no. <laughs> to these people, to these, these people, people putting, putting my, my party, party before, before my country is the yardstick of what, what loyalty is. is. I am I saying, saying no, no again. Let, Let me be very clear one more time. time. We, we are, are just, just the party in power today. And, and we, we must understand and accept our, our duty is to all Zambians. Yes. Further, we, we must, must realize, realize that, that it is, is in the execution of this sacred, sacred duty, duty to all Zambians that our success as a party lies. As a party, we must deliberately choose to unite around the future of our country without fear or vindictiveness. It is very sad and sometimes very annoying to see that we as a ruling party seem even fearful of such things as an endeavor. Just to talk, we are scared of such things. From which there can be no losers. I believe that for the sake of both the nation and my party, we must become more cohesive, more open-minded, more welcoming, and more collaborative with each other. Countrymen and women, a Zambia without hope will be defenseless. It will be a nation under the dark night of evil men with no care or passion or patriotism. We shall fall into total despair. But I stand here before you as a beacon of light. For I not only believe, but I know that this great nation has potential and fire in its belly. Prior to the commencement of the Zambia Must Prosper projects, I was, I was hit by a number, number of reflections. reflections. My and mind was at loggerheads with my spirit and, and my soul. I kept, I kept reflecting on some discussions and meetings I had had with, with the late, late President, President Chiluba and the late Michael Chulufiasata, albeit at different, different intervals. intervals. Being taken into the confidence of these men was, was a, great a great honor. honor. I have, I have traversed, traversed the length and breadth of this, this great country, country several, several times, times by, by road. road. In my humble view, this, this was absolutely necessary for me, for me to, to gather, gather the necessary empirical data for my, my decisions. decisions. I, needed I needed to, to see, see and hear the ordinary Zambians. Zambians. I, I needed, needed to hear, to hear them, them speak, speak to, me to me 
so that I understand. I needed to know about their living conditions. I had to learn empathy at first hand. I have visited and talked to Zambians in Imbala, Lundazi, Mwinilunga, Kabombo, Livingston, Dundumwezi. Yes, Dundumwezi. I have been. I have been to Itejiteji, Kaoma, Mongu, Kehema, Senanga, Sioma, and Shangombo. I have been to Chililawombo, Solwezi, Kaulushi, Sengaheo, and Nakonde. I have, I have visited, visited Namwala, Chipata, Chinsari, Kasama, Mansa, Mukushi, Serenje. My stopover in Mpika was an emotional one because I had to visit the village of my late president, Sata. My hometown visit of Moflira was spiritually very challenging. Looking over three of our family graves, that of my late father, my late mother, and my late older brother, drew tears in, in my eyes. eyes. Yet, stopovers stop in Kitwe, Kitwe, Chingola, Ndola, Kapirimboshi were, were very educative. educative. In, in Mazabuga, Mazabuga Chirundu, Ziavonga, Njioma, Kalomo, Kazungula, I quickly learned that the people there just, just want, want to be appreciated, appreciated and, and respected. respected. There is love in, in Tongaland, gentlemen. gentlemen. I have, I have covered, covered the breadth, breadth and length, and length of, this of this country, including the valleys of Nimba, Petauke, Katete, and the, and the surrounding, surrounding areas. I have been, I have been, been there and have seen despair, despair in the, in the eyes, eyes of our people. I have driven through those, those places, places, driven by, by nothing, nothing but love and patriotism for this country, to see the vast, vast potential of our country, our forests, and the many rivers and lakes, lakes being wasted, wasted and ignored, I am convinced, convinced now, now more, more than, than ever, ever before, before that Zambia must prosper. <laughs> On my recent visit, visit I discovered some streams and rivers I had never, never seen before, and I laughed, I laughed at myself, myself being ignorant that, that I didn't know my country. country. Gentlemen, Gentlemen, ladies, ladies I have a vision for my country. I have an economic blueprint that will drive this country and propel this country out of poverty faster and decisively. I have seen and met poverty on numerous journeys around the country. I have listened and heard from the common man on the streets of the Copper Belt on the streets of Lusaka, from, from the farmers, farmers and, and traditional leaders in Dundumwezi, Kalomo, Mumbwa and Jioma, also, also the farmers, farmers in Nundazi and Sinda and Chipata. I have driven on those dusty, dusty roads and I feel their pain. Their are cries for deep tanks for their, for their animals, animals, fertilizers and good market prices for their produce have left an indelible mark on me. In, In other, other parts, parts of the country, country I, sat I sat attentively and listened to, to complaints about how the Ivacha and FISIP have, have not worked for the, for the peasant, peasant farmer. At, At times, times, it was difficult yeah. not to cry. Looking, Looking into, into the eyes of women, men and youths tell, tell their stories about how they are failing to receive help or even a caring hand. hand was painful. painful. The, the farmers, farmers in Kabompo, the farmers in Kabompo, Mufumbwe, Mwinilunga, Ikelenge, Chavuma and Zambezi have the same cry. Being in their presence aroused in me such pain and anguish, yet shame that tears were not enough. I was left speechless. I have watched with sheer hopelessness foreigners setting up fake sawmill plants between Mulovezi, Sioma, through to Shangombo, from Kabompo to Mwinilunga, from Umbala to Mpika, our rosewood, our mukula, our mukwa, and our pine leaving this country in the night with no return at all. 
if any, living in trucks by night. <sighs> I have met these trucks. I have seen them with my own eyes. My journey between Yoma and Shangombo took me seven hours going and seven hours coming back. A journey of just 171 kilometers. My journey between Solwezi and Mwinilunga took me four and a half hours going, four and a half hours coming back, a journey of just 275 kilometers. My journey between Mumbwa and Itejiteji took me two and a half hours to cover 130 kilometers one way, 130 kilometers back. My journey from Nakonde to Chinsali was a return to the hell run of the 1960s. A distance of just 200 kilometers felt like mission impossible. And yet, Nakonde border is our second busiest land port economically. Are we serious? Yet, this I say, I had to do this. I had to experience that. My vision for this country's economic transformation and emancipation is based on solid facts. I wanted to be factual and practical. My vision is built out of my experiences and information and interactions with our people across the country. I want to thank the late President Chiluva for teaching me patience and the art of ignoring unwanted criticism. And I've had a fair <laughs> bit of that. I want to thank the late President Michael Chilufyasata for teaching me humility and the need to visit people at their home level and sit and listen from them. From the University of Political Engineering to the University of Don Chikubeba, I have now graduated with distinctions. I want to thank the late President Levy Patrick Manawasa State Council for indoctrinating in me the relevant political discipline to call a wrong a wrong and to hate corruption. I am a proud graduate from that school. My fellow Zambians, Zambia must prosper, period. We have no reason, no excuse whatsoever to be where we are today. My vision for this nation is clear, vivid, and practical. I am advancing an economic agenda that has never been done before. This transformation that I'm proposing will be anchored on drastically changing the way we think. Our mindset must change. We must damage our economic ignorance as it relates to the following facts. These facts are the following. Number one, our youths. Our youths are the greatest human asset we have. We must treat them well. Number two, our informal sector is the engine for change. We must pay attention to that sector. Number three, our agricultural sector is the biggest employer in this country. We must be clear about that. And number four, the church. Yes, the church. Our church is our moral campus and common denominator cutting across each Zambian society. That said, I wish to make it very clear, without fear and with a clear conscience, that I, Kelvin Fubebuadia, will run for President of the Republic of Zambia. I will run for the President of the Republic of Zambia in 2021. My fellow Zambians, my fellow Zambians, I ask you to hear me clearly over the next few minutes. 
I make this serious appeal, especially to my party, the Patriotic Front and its leadership, and the general membership. Please hear me, and hear me good. I speak as a long-serving of every Zambian is our responsibility as long as we are in government. We must accept the quality of life and the standard of living for the average Zambian has dropped to unacceptable levels and this cannot be allowed to continue. Regardless of who you talk to about our country, be it the teachers, the nurses, the farmers, the taxi drivers, the bus drivers, the marketeers, the private sector, working professionals, the car dealers, the youths, the police, and the businessmen in general. Life and living has become difficult. Therefore, we as a party in government must commit to ensuring that these needs are addressed immediately. For this reason, I have decided to bring my vision for this country to the fore, and I'm appealing to all of you to get involved. To the leadership. To the leadership of the party, the Patriotic Front, I humbly ask you to put aside your pride and your arrogance and consider the suffering of the majority of the Zambian people. Zambia must prosper. Zambia comes first. It is with great love and hope for our beloved nation that I ask that we as a party address the following immediately in order for Zambia's transformation to move. Number one, governance and the rule of law. Part of the reason why so many things seem to have gone wrong is because we have disregarded governance as a very good proposition and allowed a breakdown in the rule of law. We have weakened our institutions of governance. We have destroyed our belief in our law enforcement organs. We are labeled now as a corrupt government because the rule of law has seemingly broken down. The rise of the untouchables went on thuggery, shielded by corrupt decisions and happenings under which law enforcement will sit and watch helplessly must stop. The status and stature of this party does not warrant us to be using the Public Order Act fearfully just to scare people. We are better than that. Number two, the church. As a Christian nation, we must always recognize and accept the fact that the church is our moral compass for the nation. Our leadership must always recognize that. Our relationship with the church must therefore be genuine, honorable, sincere, and non-political. We must embrace the church and realize its importance in our national development. Number three, unemployment. Job creation is a complex and huge task. This is why in my book, Zambia Must Prosper Too, I have discussed this subject extensively and shown how jobs can be created. Job creation is a complex matter that requires well thought out implementation strategies. It is not just a matter of this and that ministry standing up and claiming we have created so many jobs, we have created so many jobs. What jobs have you created? We must be able to show what kind of jobs we have created. And those jobs must be permanent quality jobs for our people. Yeah. Currently, only 14.2% of the employable Zambians are in taxable employment in Zambia. This is not the way countries develop. In Zambia Must Prosper too, I have argued how we can create over 500,000 jobs quality jobs annually. Read the book. Number four, our youths. Statistics tell us that our young people 
are the most vulnerable and are the majority job seekers today. 82% of Zambians are aged under 35 and below. Out of the total population of about 17 million, close to 14 million of this four in this bracket, we as a party have failed our youths. This is true and we must apologize. The future of this great nation is in the hands of the youths. If we agree that the youths are our future, we must address the situation head on. We must begin now to move towards having every youth at school or at work. This should be the youth agenda as clearly demonstrated in my book. Let me address our young people directly. Young people, I believe in your potential. I believe in your abilities. I know, I know that we have let you down. But I also know that you are looking for solutions. Go, tell your parents, tell your relatives, tell your friends, tell your girlfriend and boyfriend, KBF has arrived with solutions. My dear young people, listen to me and listen good. I know what it is to have nothing. I've been there. I know what it is to live on a single mother's salary without a father because my father was in prison most of the time. I know what it is to cry rivers in your sleep with no help in sight. I know what it is to be hungry and not to be sure whether you're going to eat today. I know what it is to walk long distances to school, to study late so that you can pass an exam. I know. I know what it is to queue up for a buzzery, to be abused. I know how it feels. I've been there. I know firsthand. I know poverty firsthand. I have been there. I am one of you. Don't look at this suit and think I was born like this. I was once like you. My dear youths, I am asking you to take a keen interest in the affairs of our nation. I am asking you to take a keen interest in your future. I am asking you for your friendship. Tuamba Nechibusa wa Yufi because five years ago you were not this age. Five years from now you will not be this age. Tule Kulaka. Number five, the informal sector. 76% of the employed Zambians are in the informal sector. These people include marketeers, bus drivers, taxi drivers, barbers, watamanga, jarabos, stone crushers, hairdressers, people running saloons and running little restaurants here and there, fabricators, bricklayers, mechanics, peasant farmers, and many more. We have over 4 million Zambians as available labor, ready to work, but without jobs, with no direction. This is a time bomb. Excluding agriculture, the informal sector is supporting over 5 million people, directly or indirectly. Our people in the informal sector are in dire need of a well-structured government support system. We have failed this. But I'm telling you now, I have solutions. Yeah. In Zambia Must Prosper too, I demonstrate how possible it is to organize the informal sector for effective national development. Number six, our education. The quality and wealth of a nation is highly dependent on the quality of its human resource. An educated population translates to a skilled labor force. Currently, our education system is inadequate. We 
can have the best ideas on how to run our education system. But if we do not value our teachers, we do not value our lecturers and what they bring to the table, if we do not value the students and the purpose why we are educating the students and their learning environment and the institutions in which they are learning, the institutions in which they are operating, then we shall fail in our education system. We shall be failing in our duty to produce the highest quality and caliber of human resource that this nation needs. Quality education is the greatest equalizer which must be availed to all and must never be relegated to being a privilege for the few. Education equalizers. I've been there. I wasn't born from a rich family. My mother and father were not rich at all. They were average Zambians. But because of the education they gave me, look at me now. Every child deserves a chance. Number seven, health. Our health system is improving. A healthy population is a productive population. It is impossible to guarantee effective national development without a healthy population. We have made great strides in the construction of health infrastructure countrywide. I salute you. We must, we must now seriously address the issue of equipment, medicines, and the motivation of our health personnel. It is unacceptable for our people to die in beautiful buildings simply because they do not have medicines, they do not have life-saving equipment, and the personnel is not motivated. This is unacceptable. Number eight, agriculture. Agriculture is the most important industry we will ever have in this country. It is the biggest employer and has the biggest potential for the country's economic development. The simple truth is, we have failed to run our agricultural sector productively. We do not seem to appreciate the business ethics involved in this sector. We must therefore realign our agricultural policies to attain the maximum productive levels. I have argued in my book that at least an individual farmer must at least cultivate 10 hectares and at least contribute $25,000 annually to the GDP to be considered productive. Number nine, labor relations. According to the Central Statistics Office, about 780,000 people are employed in formal employment. These are civil servants, those that work for parastatals and other formal jobs. A fair number of these, I'm sorry to say, today are suffering because they cannot be paid. The hard-working, formerly employed Zambians are not getting their salaries. Why are we insulting our people, whom we have contracted to work, but are failing to pay them? I strongly suggest that the politicians in the current government must stop getting their salaries first. They must begin to pay those people who are not getting paid. After that, when they have paid the outstanding salaries, then they must start getting half salary so that they pay all the arrears for all the civil servants who have retired. That is leadership. They must pay all these regardless of when and under which government these outstanding payments became due. That is how leaders work. Number 10, taxation. The tax burden on the hardworking people of Zambia is unreasonable, unfair, and it's choking. The only way to sustainably increase our tax revenue is by sustainably improving the welfare of our economy and radically increasing our tax base. What is worth noting is that it is those in the lower ranks who are more vulnerable every time a company suffers. 
those at the top, the bosses, will most of the time survive and their lifestyle will continue. But the poor Zambians inevitably will be the ones to suffer. With new businesses and an eventual 500,000 jobs being created annually, as outlined in my book, Zambia's tax base will be expanding rapidly. There will be more workers earning good enough salaries to contribute to the pay as you earn. There will be more companies paying corporate tax and contributing to the general purse of this country. There will be more Zambians contributing to road tax and other taxes. This will make it possible for us to begin reducing the tax required from each individual and the companies. Our target is at least to hit each individual paying only 10% as tax. This is what was meant when we structured Namamdala Basata. Less taxes and more money in people's pockets. I wish to restate, ladies and gentlemen, that I am running for president. However, I am appealing to the leadership and the of the entire patriotic front to begin addressing the issues that I have alluded to, amongst others. To my president, Edgar Chagwalungu, I have a few words. Please take heed and reflect on our history as a political party. Recently, Mr. President, you confessed that you have been lied to by some people in your team. I could not agree more. As observed by Baron von Sten, urging Frederick Wayne III in opposing Napoleon. This was in 1808, a long time ago. Von Sten said the following words, and I quote, The only salvation for the honest man is the conviction that the wicked are prepared for any evil. It is worse than blindness to trust a man who has hell in his heart and chaos in his head. If nothing awaits you but disaster and suffering, at least make the choice that this is noble and honorable and that will provide some consolation and comfort if things turn out poorly. End of quote. Let me be clear, Mr. President. You have done your best for our party and our country. You cannot do beyond your best. Kindly pass on the mantle of leadership to us. Mr. President, I make this earnest appeal to you out of love as your young brother, and I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. Let us do the fighting for you. Yes. Remove yourself from this equation. Yes. If you do, if you do, you will take the wind out of the sail of the opposition. Yes. Why? Because you are the target. And if you remove yourself from the fight, the opposition will be lost. Yeah. They'll have nothing to hit. Yeah, yeah. Let them shoot at us. Yeah. I am prepared to fight yeah. on our behalf. commenting on the power of passing it on and I quote 
Number one, the greatest act of leadership is mentoring. Number two, if what you learn, achieve, accumulate, and accomplish dies with you, then you are a generation of failure. Number three, an insecure person will never train people. They will oppress them. Number four, your assignment has a shelf life. Five, you will die one day. So train your replacement. Number six, your greatest gift to the world is your mentee, us. Number seven, leadership success is measured by the success of your successor. Number eight, success without a successor is failure. Number nine, legacy is about living beyond your grave. And number ten, the ultimate measure of leadership is the ability to leave. End of quote. I totally agree with the words of Dr. Miles Monroe the late, and I urge you, Mr. President, to leave this fight to us who are energetic and passionate to fight for you. What is becoming clear by the day is that Zambia needs a new face, a new voice, and a brand new vision. Yeah. Zambia needs new energy. Zambia needs new passion and a new direction to build on the strong foundations that have already been laid. In the words of the great Indian revolutionary leader Mahatma Gandhi, there are seven political sins. Number one, wealth without work. Pleasure without conscience. Three, knowledge without character. Four, commerce without morality. Five, science without humanity. Six, religion without sacrifice. And seven, politics without principle. Mr. President, a lot of the people that surround you are failing in all these. I have sadly observed members of the Patriotic Front leave the party, with some going to form other small organizations. I appeal to my brothers who have left the party to come back home. It is not time to fragment ourselves. We don't have time, we don't have the luxury of wasting time on such irrelevant agendas. Half of you don't even know why you left the party. Come back home. To our old members, I say to you, there's a new dawn on the horizon. Listen to me. We have not forgotten the teachings of Vatatavasata. Come back home. To those that are standing on the fence, come back home. To the new members, I am saying, come and join us. Come and join us because this is a brand new day. A brand new day with a brand new promise. I must remind all of us who went to the people and asked the people to give us the mandate as a party that if anything goes wrong, it remains our collective responsibility to correct it and not to leave. Don't run away from problems. Face your problems. Be a man. For this reason, as we deliberate on transforming Zambia, as we labor with clarity of purpose and unwavering conviction that it is time for Zambia's prosperity, I present to you my brand new book, Zambia Must Prosper Too. And I thank you.
tribute to the people that were significant, very historical and monumental in the liberation struggle. He started by paying tribute to the first founding father of uh, the founding father of uh, the Republic of Zambia, Dr. Kenneth Kaun, and then he also he also paid tribute to the late President Frederick. Uh, Fred he also paid tribute to uh, uh, Dr. Levi Patrick Mwanawasa. He also paid tribute to the founding father of the Patriotic Front, that's uh, Michael Chilufia Sata. Now, one thing that is quite interesting is that from Dr. Frederick Chiluba, he said he's a proud graduate of someone who never paid attention to unwarranted criticism whenever uh, they're criticized. And he's been a victim of criticism uh, himself. And then he also paid tribute to Dr. Levi Patrick Mwanawasa, all right, uh, as being a person who he lent to be someone that was allergic to corruption and stood on principle. And then to uh, uh, the left, uh, Michael Chilofiasata, he said he learned so on how to be a servant of the people. All right, there are quite a number of aspects that have been highlighted, but we'll definitely be getting hold of people and pick out the key act they noted from the speech from Melvin Waliafube. But the most resounding comment is that he's going to run for president in 2021. All right, I have with me people that I would love to get opinions, all right, on uh, what has been uh, stated by KBF at the launch of uh, his book. All right, so kindly give me your name, and uh, what do you pick out from the statement that has been made by Kelvin Waliafube? Yeah, my name is Ari Brant, uh, John Mwendapole. I'm the Deputy National Secretary for Christian Coalition. Accommodation now quite. Erio, Bavica Pona Clinic, Bavica Pone School, and now whatever. You went to Pura Farm, but to I can go there. Why? I know the importance of dot, I mean, so man came from so, I mean, drama struck a good dot. What we eat comes from the soul, what we wear comes from the soul, everything comes from where. Yes, so, so I and I know such an end of Pusha utilize that the Chan Pasa government farm man pass will say utilize because I know the importance of farming. So it's not like we are going to be down to a girl. How we are going to be in the commons. Commons in a chasing and Kaya commons, Jagua, and Gapmons will be clinic. There are no better hospitals, there's, there's no good sanitation, water. My kids are staying home six to six. Yeah, in, yeah, outside of school. I cannot go. He has outlined issues as being open to a Zambian to say yes in terms of leadership and in terms of politics. We are looking to a unifier, and we hope and trust that in this country, uh, to aspire to, to stand as a presidential candidate, it's the right of an individual. We are looking forward to say that the party that KBF wish to stand on, right, as a member. My name is uh, Jubal Zulu.
I have been graduating slowly, but I have now graduated from the graduation school of Levi Patrick Manawasa. A wrong is a wrong. Corruption is corruption. That's the end. And we must call a spade a spade. Whether it's perpetrated by PF or not, a wrong is a wrong. The problem is we watch too much and do very little. We must begin to say this is not correct and it must be plugged before it grows. I recently heard of a minister on a radio talk show calling people in the patriotic front as John Sodio were. How can a minister call his own members as John Sodio were? Number one. Two, he was in the MMD when we were fighting the MMD. He has just come to join us. What right does he have to speak to us like that? He found us here. If I were in leadership, that means they're gone. That's the truth. And that's the discipline I'm talking about. You don't insult your members. You don't. Especially you just came. We must always distinguish between status and value. You can have a status of a minister, but what is your value to the party? You may not have value at all. You may have the status, but not the value. Such must be nubbed in the part. So, Basinkai, if you wanted to see a difference, I'm showing you a difference. I would have fired that minister myself. What else do you want? Next question, please. Statistics don't lie. This, this is from Central Statistical Office. Go and ask them. 
our, our population, population is 17 million today as Zambians, Zambians which, which means about 10% of our population, our population in agriculture. It's too much. We, we should have surplus food. We're, We're not being productive because we have not changed our methodology of approach to agriculture. We have, we have not appreciated that agriculture is a business. We, we think it is a subsistence way of living, living. and we, and we have politicized agriculture. That, that shouldn't, shouldn't be the case. case. Take, Take Israel. Israel. Israel has a population of 8.6 million people. There, there are only 44,000 people in Israel doing farming today. today. Each individual, individual farmer in Israel, Israel contributes 2 million kwacha worth to his annual, annual GDP. The, the annual, annual GDP of this country, country is $24 billion. Dollars. The, the annual, annual GDP of Israel is $370 billion dollars for a population of 8.6 billion people. That's, That's an insult, insult to us. What, what am I saying? Israel is in a desert. It has, it has no, no fresh, fresh water. water. It has, it has no, no arable land. land. It has no temperate climate. It is hot perpetually. What, what they've done, done is they've gone into systems that suit the agriculture setting. They're, they're now exporting citrus fruits into Europe. They're, they're exporting vegetables into Europe. Europe. They are, they are, they're, producing they're producing much more than they need in, in the, the agriculture sector. sector. We, we in Zambia, Zambia on the other, the other hand, have got all the rivers that I've seen in my travels. We've got, We've got all the lakes we have. We have. We have, we have all, all arable land. land. There, there is no desert in Zambia. Anywhere you go in Zambia, you can farm. You've got nice forests. What, what are we doing? doing? It, it is, is the attention, attention that you give the agriculture sector which is wrong. We, we do agriculture like if, by the way, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be. be. We don't, we don't need, need copper if we address the agriculture sector. Agriculture, agriculture can, can feed this nation, nation even, even export to other countries. countries. I am I arguing that, that if each, each farmer, farmer can, can produce minimum 10 hectares of productive, productive food, and ensure, and ensure that, that you contribute $25,000 worth annually to the GDP of this country, country. Then, then we're getting out of pocket. Now, if, if agriculture takes care of at least 8 million people, that is, that is half population out of poverty, what, what more do you want? want? What, what more do you want? want? I, have I have argued in my book that, that we are going to be constructing what we are calling production cities. Some of, Some of these production cities will look like this. this. First, First of all, you are going, going to identify a piece of land. Take over that piece, piece of land. land. Build at least, at least the residential houses around that piece of land for your, your workers to come and stay. Then, then you identify what kind of agriculture or what kind of industry you're going to run around that building or around, or around that, that area. area. For, for example, example, if you, you say plantation, you're, you're going, going to do another Kampala sugar estate, say, along the Chambeshi River in Muchinga. What, what you do is you put up 500,000 houses. Okay? As, as a start. start. So, so you've, you've got, got 500,000 500, workers to come, to come and work. work. Then you start planting the sugar cane along, along the river because, because the water is just next door. So you do irrigation. Each plantation is then, is then going, going to give you sugar cane. It is also going to give you biodiesel. You, you can, can put industries along, along the way. Then you, then you can, can now start feeding your cattle and off that, that your pigs and, and your cows, cows. Because, because that's by product. It's very easy. All it requires Lorenzo, Lorenzo is a is bit, a of, bit sitting of sitting down, thinking, and planning. That's, that's what, what we haven't been doing. been doing. We have, have continued from where the colonial masters, masters left us. We, we can't. can't. We, we went, went to school, school for a reason. reason. We, we must now start, start implementing. implementing. I've, I've got, got kids, kids and now I'm thinking, thinking about, about their future. What, what about, about their future and their future, the future of their kids? That's why I have decided to run. It is important that we change the way, the way we think. think. I'm, I'm just, just giving you an example. example. So, so if, if you say we're going to set up a mining, mining town, town as a production city, you, you identify what mineral you're going to be mining, mining. Put, up put up houses, that, that number of workers, workers you're going to have. have. In, In there, there you put up a shopping mall, you put up a clinic, you put up a school, so that workers don't go anywhere. They are within that confinement. They work at the industry, they've got their schools, their kids going to school, they've got their clinic, they've got their... They've got everything within their work. You, you can, can get people out of the streets and take them to the village because they would like, like to go and stay. It, life, life will be cheaper. Be cheaper. Now, now you're going to ask me where we're going to get my money. It's very easy. Do we, Do we need, need to build airports at $395 million? I don't, I don't think, think so. How many, How many people, people are going to use the airport? We can slow down that, but you can knock off $100 million out of that. And go and, go and build an agro city. Go, go and build, build an industrial city. city. Start, Start it from there. there. It's, it's very easy. easy. So, so in other words, Lorenzo, 
it's, it's about, about prioritizing. It's about, about how you argue your case. I, I hope I've made my point. point. What, what mistakes have we made? I'll answer this in relation to my good sister who also came, came from a radio station. station. What, what mistakes has the PF made? <laughs> I, don't I don't even know how to answer this. this. Lorenzo, Lorenzo and my sister. I, 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 I don't want, want to be rude, rude but are you the only Jews who don't live in Zanga? You don't see what's going wrong. When, when people, people are not being, being paid, paid on time, time isn't, isn't that, that a problem? When, when you start apportioning workers, workers Lanas, 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 and my teachers next week, week then, then you're going to pay the soldiers the other, the other week, week, Air Force the other week. You, you don't see a problem with this? Need I stand here and narrate the problem? We own it in the real world. Let's face it. There are mistakes. It's in the administration. We have to be real. These, These problems, problems are known to all of us. Let's, let's not pretend there are no problems. They are, are problems. And, and all, all I'm saying is, is let's accept that we've made mistakes. Let's, let's accept that we've done, done wrong things. things. Now, now, what, what caused these things? things? One, One the, budget. the budget. Priorities in the budget are wrong. Two, Two procurement. procurement. Our procurement, Our procurement system, system is wrong, wrong also, also because, because we inflate, inflate everything. everything. A, road A road which is supposed to cost you $400,000 is costing you $1 million. Dollars. Why? Why? It, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. sense. I, stand I stand here, here as, as a graduate. graduate. I've got a master's degree in procurement. And, and I, can I can tell you, it can't, it can't be right. right. It can't be right. Our, Our procurement, procurement system, system is wrong. wrong. We, we inflate everything. everything. And, and we, we allow those people who are inflating these figures to go scot-free for, for what? Punish, punish them. them. Set an example. It's, it's called governance. governance. That's, That's corruption. corruption. Why do you want to start Stop saying no, no but because, because they are for no? There's nothing like that. These are mistakes. These are mistakes. mistakes. We've got, got to deal, deal with these mistakes. mistakes. Head, on. Head on. We've got to face it. it. I, I belong, belong to this party. party. And I'm saying we've made mistakes. We must, we must accept, accept and, say and say sorry to the Zambian people. people. This, this is, is not what they bargained for. <laughs> so those, those are, are some of the mistakes. mistakes. I could stand here the whole day and narrate mistakes, mistakes, but those, those are some mistakes. mistakes. My, My sister, Mwape, when am I running? There's no time. 2021 is when I'm running. There is no time. We have got children. Let us agree. And I did say, Tule Kulaka. Hello? Vamuape. Tule Kulaka. Some boy has sung a song like that. Tule Kulaka. We cannot sit here and start pretending that time is with us. It's not. I don't think, Vamuape, sitting there, you will want this for another five years. What's going on now? Let's be real. Let's be real. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. What I'm trying to do is to damage your fear. And I'm saying to you, stop fearing. You have the power as Zambians to change this system. Why are you changing? Why are you fearing? What are you fearing? Who are you fearing? There's only God to fear. So, let me be clear. For the benefit of my sister Mwape. I am running in 2021 and I hope some people don't run. <laughs> now I don't understand how clear I can be. Some people must not run according to me because we cannot continue with this. We can't. I have children. They were babies yesterday. Today they are graduates and they are trying to get into work. What future am I leaving them? What future are you leaving your kids, Bamwa? You answer that question and you ask me a question again. Next question, please. We'll take the last three. Good morning.
where does that leave you now? Good morning, Gonzo. Morning. challenge them. Go and ask them. 
before they understood what to do and how to answer Guy Scott and his machinations, they came to me. Why did they wake me up in the night? Ask them. I gave the current president of our party undivided support because among us the candidates who were vying for that portfolio at that time I considered him the best. He was a lawyer. I expected him to know the Constitution. I expected him to understand our manifesto. He was a long-serving member. And look at the portfolios that he had at the time of the Tawale for. So we thought, okay, there must have been an element of trust. He wasn't chosen, but we said there must have been implicit a decision taken. Do you understand? That is how I supported that. Having said that, I am not responsible for the decisions that the president takes. There are things that you and I are not responsible for. Most of us sitting here could have voted for the current president in PM, but when he gets into office, he takes over that oath and he swears that he's going to be president. Power gets into his hands. The decision he takes is by him, and the buck stops with him. I am not responsible for the decisions that he has been taking, wrong or right. Those are his decisions. So for me, I don't have a problem with supporting my president up to 2021. I don't have a problem. Beyond that, I have a problem. Because when I was talking here, I told you I have visited the breadth and length of this country. What the people have told me is change things. Those are the expressions. Now, if what the people are saying is not what we're going to do, we can kiss power goodbye. That's the honest truth. We can kiss power goodbye. And then have someone coming. I have not been in government. I have nowhere to go. I'll go back and practice my law. Those who've been in government will be answered for whatever they've, did, they've done. <laughs> what can I do? I'm giving advice based on empirical evidence. I have traveled this country. I have spoken to people. I have been Bamwewa. I have driven in those rum shackles. You don't even know whether you're driving through a road, but you're driving through someone's maize field in a place called Dundumwez. I arrive in a place and I'm half fearful because I don't know whether somebody will come with Shimunyenga spears and spear but they come and they tell me we're not bad people. Don't look at us like that. What you've been told about us is not what we are. When you told us you were coming, have you traveled on this mukulo, mukwa, on this road? I said yes. You told us you're coming in two hours. It's taken you four hours. Why? The road is bad. How many deep tanks do we have? That's all they cry for. My deep tank and the road. They're not difficult people. But go and ask the leadership if any one of them has driven on the roads I've driven. Go and ask them. Whether they've sat with the people I've sat with. Go and ask them. It's not about flying around in helicopters following the president. Then you think you have landed in a place. No. Drive on the road. Feel what the people feel. You can only understand it when you've been there. Experienced it. And the people will speak to you. I told you, going to Shangombo from Sioma, the nearest town to Shangombo is Sioma. It took seven hours to get there. One way. Seven hours. I could start off from here and get to Bala in seven hours. That is 171 kilometers. Seven hours. You get stuck in the sand. You have to reverse there's only one road. So if you meet a truck, you have to reverse. Find the driveway. Then the trucks pass. Then you start off again. You get stuck in the mud again. It's, it's terrible. And to think this is part of Zambia. Those are mistakes. Because I know the things we had done and planned now at Tawasata, that road could have been done by now. I know that. The road which is just at the backside of Lusaka instead of using the fuel road going to Chirundu, that road should have been finished by now. We haven't finished it. Do you want me to go? Lorenzo, your last
last question has been answered in my speech, surely, how many times do I have to steal it? Thank you. Fellow Zambians, for Zambia to prosper, we need more people to be employed. And further, these people that are going to be employed need to contribute better value to the economy than we are contributing right now. So, the quality of the training that we give our Zambian youths, the quality of the education that we give our Zambian youths, says a lot about what kind of population we need to have tomorrow. The youth are the future of this country. Therefore, they need to be better trained, better equipped, and better educated. That means that these people are going to be more productive to the nation. Now, Zambia has got many institutions of higher learning. We've got colleges, vocational training institutions, and of course, universities. But at the end of the day, we must control the level of education and the quality of that education. It is important to understand that having access to education is important because it levels the playing field. Whether you come from a rich family or a poor family, as long as you've got access to education, you have a chance at least running away from poverty. I am a living... Fellow Zambians, for Zambia to prosper, we need more people to be employed. And further, these people that are going to be employed need to contribute better value to the economy than we are contributing right now. So, the quality of the training that we give our Zambian youths, the quality of the education that we give our Zambian youths, says a lot about what kind of population we need to have tomorrow. The youth are the future of this country. Therefore, they need to be better trained, better equipped, and better educated. That means that these people are going to be more productive to the nation. Now, Zambia has got many institutions of higher learning. We've got colleges, 
vocational training institutions and of course universities. But at the end of the day, we must control the level of education and the quality of that education. It is important to understand that having access to education is important because it levels the playing field. Whether you come from a rich family or a poor family, as long as you've got access to education, you have a chance at least running away from poverty. I am a living testimony to that. I didn't come from a rich family. My family wasn't rich at all. I came to become who I am today because I had a shot at education. I had a shot at education because I understood that without education, I wasn't going to make it in this world. Without education, I wasn't going to have a chance at living the dream that I wanted to live in Zambia. We have better access to becoming better people with a better quality education. Therefore, education is important and key for Zambia. Now, every university, every college, every vocational training institution has to be streamlined. This is why policy direction is important. The politicians must, must take center stage in all that we do. If we have just four million youths contributing even as little as a hundred kwacha to the press in terms of taxes, we can raise $380 million, which can educate every child from grade one to grade 12 in this country. This is important. We don't need too much, but we can have a pool. It's about numbers. So the more people we educate, the higher the quality of the contribution to GDP, the higher the quality of contribution to the national economy, the better for this country. Trust me. This we can do and we shall do. Zambia must prosper. We have a blueprint, Momanja has to say. Oh, we need is a game changer. Zambia must prosper. Zambia must prosper. Tika Ika Manja Pamosi. We have what it takes. Fellow Zambians, for Zambia to prosper, we need more people to be employed. And further, these people that are going to be employed need to contribute better value to the economy. Zambia must prosper. Tika Ika Manja Pamosi. We have what it takes. Ugoku mm. inekuli inga ndeya free accommodation na ukwazi. Hiyo ba wika pona clinic, ba wika pona school unga na ukwata ba. Iwe nchito yokuwa fikufa mukumbwa. Bakuwa aikala kwa. Eh, I can I can go there. Why? I know the importance of dot. I mean, so mm. man came came from so. I mean, drama to talk about dot. So what we eat comes from the so. What we wear comes from the so. Everything comes from where the so. So I ninga e ndi na ndo ushacha na ndo kusha utilize that dot. Chana pasa government farm na man pasa ni ushacha utilize. Cause I know the importance of farming. So it's not like we have to wake up and down to a girl. Ah, we, ah, we. Inga, in the commons. Commons, in a chest, in the kind of commons, we have to go to the big clinic. There are no better hospitals. There, there is no good sanitation, water. The child was severely motion. I cannot go. I mean, they put up with Kumozi, Nibel Apoyam Bida, Nibel Body Mida, Nibel my life stock, so is inside Kulibe. My kids are staying home six to six, year in, year out, so in the school. I cannot go. What is Nifuna in a Nangala motion on Anga Fukushan, Bangala motion? But Mangasta Panini is what he wears in life in your course. John and Ama Illumina dressed at Veda is a magic word. It's not the end of the joint of a life. Now, if the government is willing to give me land. Na voice school provided land in Nyumba Mahala. Chenza and Zaka I can go even right now so I can go. So the problem we have generally in Zambia is that the lack of quality jobs leads a lot of people to poverty and they shall forever remain in poverty because they are no jobs. The other problem we have is that these jobs that most of the youths get in town give them very little income. They are not quality jobs, they are low-paying jobs. And because they are low-paying jobs, 
the youths are going to be perpetually resigned into poverty. This must change. It is important for the government to realize that we must be the solution to these problems. And all the time, as you've seen and heard from these youths, they are prepared to get involved in agriculture. Agriculture is an answer. Every year, year in, year out, we've got 375,000 youths being brought into another job-seeking environment. These are dropouts at grade 9. They are school leavers with graduates, degrees, diplomas, and vocational training from higher institutions of learning. And yet, there are no jobs. It is important every day when we get this kind of arrangement that the youths understand that they've got a caring government. The caring government is what we want to become. We are going to change this country because Zambia must prosper. Dave, up in the We have what it takes to make it a better place. What we need is a game changer.